This is the 2013 Buick Verano. Now this particular model is the turbocharged Verano with the six-speed manual transmission. And is that enough to convince shoppers to take a look at the Buick over brands like Audi and Acura, for instance, with the Audi A3 and the TSX? Let's hop in and take a look. The Verano is, of course, based on the Chevy Cruze, but this is not badge engineering with General Motors as you're used to. So this is not like the Buick Century or the Buick Skylark from, you know, essentially my childhood. What they've really done here is they've just taken the basic parts of the Chevy Cruze, the platform, the chassis, some of the suspension things, etc., the transmissions, and they've put a completely different Buick body and interior on this platform. You'll notice that the doors are different. The, B, uh, the Chevy Cruze doesn't have these windows here, and the Chevy Cruze doesn't have these windows back here. In fact, they have that, uh, that somewhat more rental car looking rear window where there are two panes of glass in the rear window and only one of them moves. And uh, here in the Buick Verano, we get a slightly classier third window back here. If you were expecting a Chevy Cruze interior in the Verano, you'll be either disappointed or surprised, you know, depending on what exactly you were after. But this interior of the Verano surprised me, honestly, because this is not an interior I would expect from General Motors. And honestly, in comparison with the Cadillac ATS, which we recently reviewed, and I found its interior just a little bit cheap in certain areas, this Buick Verano is pretty good. And that's not because it's objectively better than the Cadillac ATS, it's really about that value question. For the price, this Verano interior is very good. Maybe it's the interior color combo that's really doing it for me, but this interior combination is very refreshing when you look at the acres of black in something like an Acura TSX or an Audi A3. There's really very little black going on here in the dashboard of this particular Verano. We have this sort of camel colored section here in the dashboard and a dark brown upper, dark brown lower, and a very nice dark brown steering wheel. The steering wheel is a variation on a theme for GM. It uses their standard buttons here in the steering wheel and an airbag cover that's fairly similar to the Chevy products. Buick, however, covers the steering wheel in much softer leather, and of course it's brown instead of that boring black color, which really goes well with this interior combo. Here in the center console, we have a button bank that would make Acura jealous. There, there really are a lot of buttons going on here. But a few that I'd like to point out are down here. We have a heated steering wheel, we have heated seats, of course, and we have dual zone climate control, which is a nice touch for a car that that's really starts under $30,000. And our particular model here, fully loaded, only hits $32,000. So it's a fairly decent value even in this segment. Of course, no car is perfect, and we do have a few cheap plastics here within easy reach of the driver. This plastic panel right here by the door handle, this is fairly hard plastic, which contrasts fairly strikingly with this fairly soft plastic upper and this soft plastic middle here. Front seat comfort in the Verano is very good, even though we don't have the same range of motion electrically as some of the competitors. You know, the recline mechanism in this seat is still manual. We do have a tilt telescope steering wheel with a decent range of motion, which really helps you find that right driving position. One serious omission, however, is a lack of lumbar support that's adjustable in this particular seat, and I have to ding them a little bit for that. However, here in the passenger seat, we have a seat that's just as adjustable as the driver's seat, only it's completely manual. So you can adjust the height of the front, seat, uh, the front of the seat cushion on the bottom and the back of the seat cushion on the bottom. You just have to pull levers on the side of the seat to do that. But it is adjustable, which is a step up from something like the Acura TSX, where there's fairly little adjustability in the passenger seat. I'm six feet tall and there's a decent amount of headroom back here and this front seat's adjusted for me at six feet tall so you can see I still have a few inches of legroom left in this seat. If I move to the middle seat, there is a decent hump going on here in the Verano for a front wheel drive car, but I still have enough headroom to sit here in the middle. Now the Verano is not a terribly wide car, so sitting three adults here in the back would be a little bit tricky for longer car trips. And because this is a compact car, you can see in the video, the shape of this door opening is a little bit, uh, well, restrictive if I'm honest. Um, this side light back here, the side window, uh, sort of behind the rear door, and the shape of the rear door make ingress and egress into the rear seats just a little bit more difficult if you're an adult. If you're a kid, it's probably not gonna be a problem, but I ended up banging my head uh, several times in the making of this video on the ceiling in the Verano. The Verano score is eight out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index because this trunk is fairly nicely finished. Now we do have trunk hinges that cut down on my leg room and my headroom, but I do have the largest roller bag you can carry on a domestic flight in here behind me. You could probably carry three or four of them 
and one journalist in the trunk. And another nice touch is we actually have a handle to help close the lid on the trunk. This is something that uh, I find missing in a surprising number of vehicles, honestly. Even high-end luxury vehicles don't have a nice and handy way to close the trunk. As you'd expect with a Turbo Verano, under the hood we have a turbo engine. This is a 2-liter 4-cylinder direct injection turbo engine, good for 250 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. It's essentially the same engine that you'll find under the Cadillac ATS as well. Now this particular engine is mated to your choice of a 6-speed automatic or a 6-speed manual transmission, which is kind of an interesting thing for Buick, and of course power is sent right here to the front wheels. I've never been the hugest fan of Buick's Venta ports, but these strike me as a little bit strange because the Verano only has a four-cylinder engine. As you can see here, we have one, two, three Venta ports over here on this side, and we have another three over on the other side, making the total six. So I'm not quite clear if what Buick is saying is that the turbo counts for two extra cylinders or something. I mean, I suppose that's logical. Ford claims that with their EcoBoost engines, but really, six Venta ports in a four-cylinder car? If you aren't viewing this in HD, it's time to click that 1080 button down there on your YouTube bar. Our particular model is equipped with the $795 optional navigation system, and we have this fairly high resolution LCD here in the dash. Now this is a touchscreen LCD as you can see, and we have this button array for controlling the system as well. We have a home button to go back to this main page where you can select your particular sources, just like navigation, phone, FM, XM, satellite radio, your iPod interface, etc. We also have iPhone app integration, so we have Pandora and Stitcher available in this particular model. Now these are available only with the iPod app, uh, or sorry, the iPhone app at the moment. There is no Android app at this moment, although General Motors tells us to expect one soon. We of course get an in-dash CD changer, that's right down here. We have our tone control here on the home screen, so that's where you'd find that. We have, of course, car options, auxiliary input, Bluetooth audio streaming. Uh, we have XM satellite weather information as well. And uh, we can go home using these quick shortcuts on the top uh, or the home button down here lower. You can, of course, get movie information, uh, fuel prices, and quick information on the system as well. Uh, this takes you to your audio information so you can see what's playing, your navigation, your five-day forecast, nearby fuel stations, with price information and as you can see right now in our particular area of California we're averaging about three dollars and forty cents three dollars fifty cents a gallon it takes a bit of getting used to but this little menu knob here in the dash is actually a nice change from some of the other systems on the market because uh, we do have this little four-way joystick button here for zooming around the map uh, and in a lot of systems namely the Acura systems you have to push that down in order to use enter but in this particular system you push down on the ring so it's the silver ring that you push down to actually select something on the map that makes it a lot harder to accidentally select something in the system I really appreciate that touch as you can see the system plays album art from your iOS or USB device and navigating your iOS and USB device is fairly easy as you can see we have full access to our artists playlists genres etc and navigating this system is fairly snappy as you can see it loads your playlist fairly quickly and then navigating around the playlist once it loads here is usually similarly quick as well. Now the system also offers voice commands via the steering wheel voice command button. Please say a command. Play artist Madonna. I found multiple results. For play. As you can see, the system is very speedy and compared to something like Ford MyTouch and Lincoln MyTouch, this system... Madonna. This system is definitely faster than the Ford systems. Uh, the voice commands are also a little bit smoother in many, uh, many times in this particular system. Over on the navigation interface, we of course can voice command our navigation Please destinations. Say a command. Navigation. Please say a navigation command or say help. Enter address. Say the destination address. 6581 Camden Avenue, San Jose, California. Now driving to 6581 Camden Avenue, San Jose, California. So you can see that was fairly speedy for entry uh, as far as voice navigation commands go on these systems. And also, there are no voice confirmation prompts to get it to actually go to that navigation destination, which I find handier because a lot of the other systems, if they are not quite clear what you've asked for, uh, you know, they won't start navigating you there right away. And while sometimes it is nice to have that confirmation, I think that overall, I really appreciated it navigating me directly to this address rather than asking me for confirmations upon confirmations. Thanks to a well-designed suspension and 235 with tires, the Verano handles and stops very well for a car of this size and in this class, especially when considering that uh, the Audi A3 and the Acura TSX are fairly direct competitors. 
In terms of straight line performance, our Verano ran to 60 in 6.3 seconds. Of course, we do have the manual transmission, so that really just depends on how good you are at shifting. The automatic transmission was a little bit slower in our tests at 6.4 seconds, but of course it does all the shifting for you. Now that six-speed automatic transmission is just as slow and just as reluctant to downshift as pretty much anybody else in this segment. The Verano steering is fairly light and fairly numb as well, but honestly these days so is pretty much everything from a BMW 5 Series to an Audi A3, and you can thank the electric power steering for that. In terms of dynamic performance out on the road, I probably would take the Audi A3 over the Buick Verano, but honestly, compared to the current generation Acura TSX, I would take this Verano over that in terms of pure on-road performance. That's because this car seems to handle better than the TSX. It also has a slightly better feel and more predictable feel when you're doing that. This engine is a great engine. It's full of mid-range torque, which is very important for passing maneuvers, as well as fun on those winding mountain roads. One area where the Verano really excels is in cabin noise. Now we're going about 65 miles an hour on a, you know, moderately rough Californian freeway, and the cabin noise is extremely hushed. This translates into a very comfortable long-term road trip experience, as well as improved speakerphone performance. So this car has a very natural sounding speakerphone, and the people that I've spoken to on it, uh, you know, sometimes weren't even aware that I was in a vehicle because the car is so quiet, it translates into less road noise on that speakerphone. After a week with this car, really the only problem in my mind is Buick's brand reputation. And it's really not necessarily a reputation in terms of quality, but in terms of the people who buy the car and the types of cars that they are. You know, they do have a reputation for building somewhat boring, softly sprung cars that aren't really engaging to drive. But if Buick keeps building cars like this, then perhaps the next generation will start associating Buick with something that's worth cross-shopping with Audi and BMW. After a week with the Verano, this is definitely a car that I would recommend to my friends and family. Not because the Verano is the best handling car or the best performing car or even necessarily the best looking car, but it is one of the most consistent cars in this segment. Everything from the way the car looks to the way the car drives to the way that the interior parts fit and feel and, and work is very consistent in this vehicle. It's also a decent value at 32000 as we have equipped here, which is essentially fully loaded except for that automatic transmission. We in the automotive press sometimes get a bad rap for being import biased. They claim that we love import cars and we hate the domestic cars regardless of anything. That's just not true actually. Buick has really had some pretty awful products in the past, but this Verano is not one of them. While I'm really not quite sure what Buick is turning into, I would definitely buy this car over the Audi A3 or the Acura TSX, and that's really saying something.